Well, welcome back to the extra point. And apparently it wouldn't be Friday night football this season without some weather delays. Julie, you know a little bit about those. What's your nickname? <laughs> Game Crusher. Game Crusher, But I yes. think now Austin Scott has that name <laughs> for us. Yeah, definitely experienced my fair share of those this season. But tonight I got lucky. I did not have any delays, so that's huge right there. <laughs> In studio, yeah. yeah. Well, we'll start with a game that had a very delayed start because of the weather. Let them back in. Liberty at Basha, two of the top three teams in Arizona right now. And Jules, this is one of the best catches I've seen this year. Braylon Gardner, what? big junior tight end, hauling it in from Navi Bruzon for a 14-0 Lions lead. Later, Bruzon to another junior, Jaqua Anderson, who will go to work. One, two, three broken tackles at midfield. Get off me, dog. And here comes number 17 all the way to the one. Liberty led 21-0 in half. How impressive is this against a high-powered Bears team that was scoring 51 a game? 35 to nothing right now in the fourth quarter. Another highly anticipated matchup between undefeated teams tonight was Chandler at Castile, but just down the road, storms forced this one to be postponed. Kickoff set for three o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Liberty's looking so good right now. Mm. Yeah, no weather issues in Scottsdale. Desert Edge at Saguaro with the Sabercats repping the green jerseys tonight for Tug Garcia, an equipment manager who passed away in 2013. Saguaro already up seven with the ball on the goal line. Running back Robert Moore takes the handoff and powers through for the score. Sabercats take a 14-point lead. They strike right back. Scorpions, Ezekiel Melender with a screen pass to Kazion Dia Johnson, who cuts through the defense to take it 58 yards to the house. And then the Sabercats taken that one personally on the ensuing kickoff. The ball drops short of the 20-yard line. Sophomore Dejon Hinton picks it up. Wow. And there he goes, 75 yards to the house for the touchdown, extending Sofaro's lead. And they wouldn't look back from that. The Sabercats win big, 42-18, and snaps <laughs> a two-game losing skid, now sitting at 500 on the season. Needed well, those green jerseys. I know, I love those. Perry at Hamilton, another delayed start tonight, at least at last check. Hamilton leads 14-0 in the third quarter. All right, defending 5A state champs, the Horizon Huskies hosting the undefeated Higley Knights. It was a low-scoring game out there. Horizon up 7-6, but in the third quarter, Higley's QB, Jamar Malone II, finds Dominic Esposito, and he's not running Desposito. He has some nice moves, gets the Knights into the great field position here. Same drive, and it's Malone who's going to decide to keep it himself as he dives headfirst for the score. That gives Higley a 12-7 lead, but Huskies running back Anthony Segura would score the go-ahead touchdown late in the fourth get the two-point conversion horizon comes out with the win 15 to 12. All right, time to introduce you to this week's king's man mountain ridge senior offensive lineman alex deuce who's listed at 6'6 295 pounds the future northwestern wildcat telling me tonight he can squat 600 pounds bench 435 and power clean 355. the youngest of three boys just keeps getting bigger and stronger but he has a soft spot, Deuce playing for his mother who passed away last spring after battling cancer. He often uses the hashtag T1FM on social media. This one is for mom. I realized not too long ago that Lyman's all about grit. I mean, we're gonna do, we're gonna have to do the hardest work and we won't be appreciated for it, but win or lose, I will get better from every single experience I have. Where's that mindset come from? It's my mom. She endured so, so much that I took that from her, and I need to keep embracing it. He's a great kid, um, you know, leader, a great teammate. I mean, I mean, there's not enough you can say positive about the kid, quite honestly. I mean, he's the kind of guy that you just wish you had, you know, the whole team of guys just like him. If you did, you'd never lose a game. The two and two Mountain Ridge Mountain Lions hosting the North Mustangs who are coming off their first win of the year. The visitors feeling fine early. Abraham Ortega. Picks off the Brendan Anderson pass. The senior linebacker has his sideline all kinds of fired up. Even more so moments later. Very next play, 6'5 sophomore QB Luke Halgo on the rollout has a man, Juju Felix, for a 25-yard score, 6-0 Mustangs. That's when Ridge would settle in. Up 7-6 when Anderson's quick hitter to Terrence Hall will turn into six. Number seven's got some wheels. Later in the second quarter, really nice play here from Anderson. By in time, eventually lofts one perfectly for senior Nicholas Cardiff. And my man was fired up. Mountain Lions score 45 unanswered for a 39-point home win. 
Back to the rainy east side, Queen Creek hosting Chaparral's another delayed start here. Early second quarter, Brody Curtis barreling his way in for a Bulldog score and 7-0 lead. Same score later in the quarter, Miles Vandenhuvel, who was slinging it. And look at this throw. Goes across his body on a dime to Zach House. <laughs> Sweet mother of dragons, we're tied. <laughs> Mitch Radigan would put QC back in front in the final minute of the first half. But this one just wrapping up, Chaparral, they scored with, uh, I don't know, two minutes left to win 21-20. He looked like Patrick Mahomes right there. Oh. All right, taking a look at Desert Ridge, visiting Cesar Chavez, and this one was a barn burner. The Jaguars win by one, taking it 43-42. All right, Post and Butte, Broncos riding a three-game winning streak, taking on St. Mary's and Phoenix. Ball at the one for the Knights, and QB David Galindo calls his own number and sneaks it into the end zone. 7-0 St. Mary's all the way down the other side of the field. One at the one for Post and Butte and QB Max Larson trying to run it in. The ball comes out. He might have been down. PJ Lewis pounces on it for St. Mary's. And after a little conversation, the refs say Knights ball. The Knights would then drive all the way down to the one. And Galindo takes it himself for another touchdown to cap off an impressive 99 yard drive and take a 14 nothing lead. St. Mary's with the win over Post and Butte 27 to 12. All right, out in surprise, the Peoria Panthers visiting the Cactus Cobras, and the home team gets the scoring started in the first quarter. Braden Lagafana hits Nico Boncor Montoya for the 10 yard strike. Peoria then blocks the extra point. Cactus up 6 0, and the Cobras would get an interception. Was that the extra point? I can't see, it's too far away. <laughs> and on their second drive, they get their second touchdown of the night with a five yard run by Damian Giles. They convert the extra point this time, now up 13 zip. The Panthers trying to claw their way back into this one. In the second quarter, Peoria with the ball on the goal line, and it's Isaiah Beckner who punches it in, cutting the deficit. Cactus leads 21 to six with less than a minute until halftime. Giles is gonna take it again and breaks a few tackles all the way to the end zone, giving the Cobras a 28 to six lead. At the half, the Cobras get the win 47 to 20 over Peoria. Back out in Scottsdale, Desert Mountain hosting Notre Dame Prep. This one scoreless into the second quarter. Until the Saints go marching down to the red zone, quarterback Noah Trigueros fakes the handoff and does the rest himself, diving into the end zone. Corner pylon, 7 0 lead for NDP. They'd go on to win this one in triple overtime, 20 17, handing Desert Mountain their first loss of the season. All right, a scary situation tonight at Carl Hayden High, where the game had to be called after gunshots were heard outside the school in West Phoenix. Everybody go. Yeah, students and staff hid under benches and bleachers while players on the field laid flat on the ground. Everybody was eventually moved into the auditorium before being allowed to leave. Luckily, no injuries have been reported. Everybody at the game is safe. Thank goodness. Yeah, glad to hear that. Well, we're not done yet. We have more high school football right after this.